Now, depending on how you look at it, life can be either very funny or deeply maddening by virtue of the fact that there is a lesson in everything we do, whether we like it or not. Uh, for example, my first and second cars are really the dichotomy between the two. Uh, I made every mistake with my first car. I, I bought it new, I didn't pay cash. Most importantly, it was an absolutely abysmal car to drive. But then I righted all of those wrongs going into my second car. You could say I learned my lessons. But then there was another unexpected lesson that if the engine ain't there, but it's there, not only does it impact the way the car drives, but there's a certain like virtue about it, something it stands for. And then on top of that, in this specific case, when I was in college, uh, there was just enough of it, but not too much. Get it? And I feel like today, you and I need to go on an advanced PhD lesson of just enough and not too much in today's car world. So at last count, this is part three drive of the saga of the Carrera T, but unusual for us, it's part five, two of driving, because we had a glimpse at this thing up in Northern California. Granted, it was a Carrera T, but what was important, it wasn't the most pure of Carrera Ts. It was a PDK, had a lot of options, so it lost some of the Carrera T-ness that we talked about in the tech review. So our job now is not to determine if it's quick, it's quick. Our job is to determine what kind of difference does that transmission make in terms of, well, this is only rear wheel drive, so pushing power. Okay, so now that we understand each other, I feel we need to do something, and it's really the only thing that will demonstrate this special combo of bits we talked about in the tech review, and it, it, it really is something we need to do more often in this world of launch control. And I gotta be honest, I don't even remember the term, it was drop something, drop the beat. No, uh, maybe, oh, drop the mic. No, that wasn't it either. It was drop, drop, oh yes. Drop the clutch. And that, oh God, does that. That feels wunderbar. Now, do I feel the difference in the final drive ratio? The extra tenth of a second difference to 60 or really, that it's that much faster? No, I'd be lying to you if I told you I did. But what I do feel in power delivery here is it's more mechanical. And it has nothing to do with the engine because the engine's exactly the same as the car we drove, what, almost two years ago now. What this is is just, I feel like you're working the transmission a bit more. Not because it doesn't have power, it's because what the transmission is going to give you because you work it more. And that is the power delivery difference. I have some rather surprising news to share with you, and for you to understand it, we need to play a mini round of the options game. So without further ado, let's jump right into a 2018 911 Carrera T. Base price, 102,100 US dollars. To that, we add the carbon ceramic rotors, $8,560. Ouch. Then we add to that rear wheel steering, $2,090. And then we add to that, nothing. Believe it or not, this is a Porsche with two, count them, Zwei options. And that is all. So we add to that a destination charge of 1,050 for a total price of 113,760 US dollars. 
Okay, so this is exactly the spot that I wanted to take this thing to so you and I could talk about driving dynamics. Now remember, this one's got the old school mechanical diff and it's got the optional rear wheel steer. So how does it handle a beautiful declining radius turn with an elevation change at the end? Well, uh, predictable when you consider this is still a 991.2, but what's fascinating about this is it is more precise uh, and you control how precise it is. Like, yeah, you've got the benefits of the four-wheel steer we talked about in that uh, Targa that we drove in this very same road, but this turn up here demonstrates something very important to us. Number one, I am the one that's directing the driving dynamics here. So it feels more rewarding as you drive it, but the addition of the mechanical diff makes you realize this is why people have been pissing and moaning about the way 911s drive for 55 years. In other words, the fact that you don't have an axle in the front and the fact that you've got a bit more mechanical control over the car, meaning it's not e-diff, it's not some NASA level computer that is controlling a 550 horsepower turbo, it's you controlling a 370 horsepower car and the point, or at least the aspect you notice the most, how perfectly balanced they got this thing out of the gate from the get-go and just by making a couple of tweaks here and there, not too much, makes this more your car than any other 991.2 you and I have driven to date. Now granted, we still have to drive that GT3 Touring, something tells me I like that one better than this. But when you consider this is half the price, or realistically with market forces less than half the price of a GT3 Touring, this is probably the bargain of the century. And I know you think that's incredibly funny for me to say with that staring back at us. Oh, and uh, one more thing, the sound insulation. Uh, normally that would be something we'd cover talking about notes, but really it has something to do with the driving dynamics because the car is louder. That's by virtue of the fact of less sound insulation, so you get more of the sound of the three liter twin turbo, which does not have the same problem the 718 Cayman and Boxster has, and that this doesn't sound like a lawnmower, it still sounds like a 911. And, and these, like, ever since I can remember, had a, like a, a hose, it's like a, a pipe. That's all it is, it's not electronic, it's not amplified, there's a pipe that goes to the back of the car that literally just says, okay, this is the natural sound, we don't do anything to it. Here it's that plus less sound insulation, which makes, you know, there's a great book, Talk Like Ted, and people are convinced, not by what you say, but by how you say it and the intonation. Let's call the less sound insulation, more intonation. So back in the day, and I mean really back in the day, like back to the future kind of days, Ford and GM, they were guilty of making special editions of their cars, and they were nothing more than uh, tape and trim changes. Uh, well, we've determined in the tech review, and now this episode, as well as a quick drive review, that there are indeed some mechanical changes uh, between a Carrera and a Carrera T. But guess what? There are some tape and trim changes. Uh, for example, the lip sport is a little bit different. The mirrors are the sport mirrors that are painted in gray. To match the mirrors, uh, there are gray louvers. And then, of course, there are gray wheels, uh, which we talked about in the tech review, are the Carrera wheels, the 20-inch wheels. And then last but certainly not least, there is a tape stripe. And that's probably the thing you notice the most. So you and I need to talk two things. Uh, first one is very much in the logistics column. Second one is absolutely on the philosophy side of the fence. And uh, what we'll do is go down this road and go into the logistics. And that would be the seats. Uh, totally supportive. Uh, no complaints there. But uh, this, there's some sort of text. I don't know what they call it. It's like a, it's like a netting almost. Remember the three, what was it, the 350Z when they had that netting seat option with like half leather, half netting? It's kind of like that, but it doesn't breathe. The whole point of that was breathing. This, and uh, just so you know, and you'll probably laugh at me, we've had quite the heat wave in the California Republic here, and that's exactly when I've had this car. Wow, um, this fabric does not breathe. Does it not breathe to the point where I'd get $5,200 seats? I don't know, I think I'd buy those seats just because they're cool. Uh, and that gets us to the philosophical part of the discussion. 
And I've had to spend a lot of time reflecting upon this and talking about it with Kumo. And he brought up something I feel is the most salient point of the Carrera T. This is not a Carrera you can buy an option up. Like, for example, this has got the carbon ceramic rotors. I can do like a panic stop here, but I can do it over and over again throughout the day, take it to the track. Uh, these will be fade free. There is no difference in performance uh, on the street or just driving it around town, but it is a $9,000 option. That aside, this can be fitted with pretty much any option that a Carrera can, like the sunroof, the different seats, uh, PDK, which I think is completely missing the point of this. And that is what Kumo said. You cannot put a lot of options in this thing. Like, I see why Frank or somebody at Porsche Cars North America spec this car out with only two options. Because that's what the Carrera T is about. You don't want a Carrera T with a lot of options. Maybe cooled seats. That's probably one option you do want, especially with these things. But other than that, you don't want anything. Maybe it's something. Okay, I'm getting off the point, this is what happens when Kumo's not around, but to make this thing worthwhile, to understand really what it's about, don't take a lot of option boxes. That is all. At the top of this episode, I shared with you a story about my first and second cars. I feel at this point it is abundantly clear that the car behind me has nothing to do with my first car and everything to do with my second car. In that, yeah, engine placement has something to do with virtue, but really the fact that this is just enough, but not too much, is what makes this thing stand out. You see, this could have been anything. Porsche puts a special edition anything out and you know that we will buy it because that is why Porsche is the most profitable car company in the world. So I approach this a little bit nervous thinking, is there really any difference? But now that I've spent more time than a couple of hours up in Northern California, I realized why this thing is special. It has nothing to do with the tape stripes or all of the little changes they make that make it standard equipment. It's the fact that it drives like a Noin Elf did back in the day. All of those little changes make it drive the way you think a 911 should drive. Because if we're honest with each other, 911s as they've matured into a 991.2, especially like a Turbo S, they're no longer cars, they're spaceships. So they have to drive differently than the 911s that we fell in love with back in the day. And this, kind of says, or at least admits from Porsche, okay, we understand that there is a group of people that want to buy old school 911s without having to buy five Porsches and then pay over sticker for something like a GT3. And that, my friends, is why this is good. Until I see you next time, bis später.